As a priest who has been now going to Mass and praying the breviary for many years, there are a lot of passages, phrases in the scriptures that I have heard so many times that when they are proclaimed, when they come up, I can finish the sentence pretty easily. And so the bad part of that, of course, is that we can do it and say, oh, I know which one this is and move on and not think about it very much. So it takes a little more effort to pay attention. And not that long ago, I was praying it with a passage of scripture. And so certain phrases stood out again as familiar. And one of those phrases is in our second reading today that describes the manifold wisdom of God. And so I read that passage and then it was like God said to me, wait a second, do you even know what that means? And the answer was, well, I guess not really manifold. Manifold is a word I only used when I was working on my truck as a teenager. I don't really know what the scriptural reference is. And so it prompted me to go back to work a little bit and say, well, what, what even is that? What is manifold wisdom? Now, it's fascinating in instances like this to compare translations of the Bible to get different senses of what those translators thought of the original languages. And so the idea of manifold is that it is multi-layered. There is a translation that includes in this passage that it is about a rich variety of the wisdom of God. Well, it's important then to think about that. If we are talking about the wisdom of God, well, obviously that is not a single thing because it would be better to say that is everything. The Old Testament goes to great pains to describe God as a wisdom, to talk about being in a right relationship with God as having wisdom. And what that means is being able to recognize the presence of God in every aspect of our lives, to see and discover, to discern that God is present in everything, that God is calling me to look through the lens of his wisdom at every single aspect of our faith. Well, this is a good way then to think about, well, what does it mean to have a parish? We celebrate these 150 years. I mentioned at the beginning the legacy of people of faith before us. From the beginning, there were those so motivated by their faith that they would expend a great deal of effort and use their resources so that they would have a place to worship. They looked at the landscape around them and they recognized that we need a place to come into contact with the manifold wisdom of God. We need a place where we can be reminded that God is present in everything. We need a place where we can discover a strength that only God can give when we face the challenges that are a part of life. We need a reminder of how it is that we are supposed to live and treat each other, how we are to engage in our world. And so a parish is given to us as a place of an encounter with God so that the manifold wisdom of God may guide our lives. This also then stands as a good way for us to approach this moment in your history, not only as a recalling of this legacy, but as the challenge of the moment, as a recognition that here we are today to encounter this same living God, and that what this living God desires for each one of us today is never a kind of static it is never a kind of sitting back and rest on your laurels, but rather it is always an opportunity to experience the manifold wisdom of God, to recognize that God is more present than we take the time to notice. And the more we can grow in this recognition, well, then that rich variety of God in our life will create a richness of our life and our faith. This is why a parish is important. This is why we take the time to come and worship, to be a members of a community, to encounter what God has for us to offer. Now, as St. Paul goes on describing this manifold wisdom of God, he calls us to what it takes, what it takes in order for us to recognize God in these multi-layers of our lives. 
He says later on that we are called to live in accord with the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with, his po with the power of his spirit in the inner self. The inner self. This is what I want to hold up to you as we celebrate this feast today. That if we're ever going to experience the manifold wisdom of God, if we're ever going to learn to look at the world around us through the lens of the wisdom of God, that will only happen if we cultivate our own inner life. It is deep within us that God shapes and molds our souls, our perspectives, the way that we go about life in this world. This is the key, I believe, to that living in the manifold wisdom of God, to engage the Lord not only in the external reality of our faith, but in the internal reality of God's love for us. As Catholics, of course, we, we hold in great value the external practice of our faith. That's what we're doing here. We're gathered in worship. We are uniting our voices. We are using the symbols of our faith to worship God. We know that in the external reality of our faith, we are called to a profound work of charity, recognizing the need of our neighbor, being willing to expend our energy for their good. We work to celebrate, to live well in community, all necessary in our faith, all external works of this manifold wisdom of God. But too often, we neglect the inner life. I imagine if I asked for a show of hands, we would get many hands that would acknowledge, I feel more like Martha than Mary. And so we can sometimes set aside the inner life and say, well, that's too hard. That's not as easy as getting to work, rolling up my sleeves and going about my business. And yet the Lord invites us to this inner work if we are going to see his presence more fully. As St. Paul goes on, he talks about the fact, the fact that because of Christ rooted in the Spirit, that we can come to comprehend fully what is the breadth and height and length and depth of God. That's pretty all-consuming. Length and height and breadth and depth. Again, everything. This is what God desires for us. He desires that we will encounter him in everything. But it is only in the inner life that God allows us to grow and change. It is in the inner life that we must confront those parts of us that do not look at the world through the lens of God. Those parts of us where we are missing the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of God. And so every time we gather, it is an opportunity for us to be renewed in the grace of God, to hold fast to our belief that demands faith from us. The simple fact that in just a moment, right here on this altar, bread and wine will become the body and blood of Jesus. That's not an ordinary thing to claim, and yet that's what draws us here. That's part of the manifold wisdom of God. It's part of the inner life that we have cultivated to be able to say, yes, Lord, I believe. And so today, as we celebrate the richness of the faith of this parish, as we could call to mind the manifold wisdom of God as it has played out over the generations of the members of this community, we renew our commitment so that the manifold wisdom of God may be evident in the way we live, that our witness of faith may truly carry on the legacy that we have received, so that we may perceive more and more fully the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of God. Let us hold up before us this image of the sacred heart of Jesus, God who has revealed himself in the love of his Son, willing to give everything so that we might come to know the love of God. And so meditating on, reflecting on the image of this heart of Jesus, we pray that each one of us may better understand and better reflect the manifold wisdom of God.